We're in Indianapolis today with Jerry Weeks Baker, a very well-known metal worker, and he's going to give us a demonstration in gas welding magnesium. This is something I've never seen before. Jerry, take it away. Thanks, Ron. When I first tried to weld magnesium for a project that I had in my shop, I was surprised to learn that almost every person I know knows that magnesium burns, even if they don't know anything about magnesium or about welding or anything else. They all seem to know magnesium burns and that it's dangerous, so they're afraid of it. In reality, in order to ignite magnesium, it has to be well beyond melting temperature. So if you have a pile of mill shavings or if you have dust from sanding, it will light right up and it burns aggressively. If you have a piece of metal that you're welding or if you have a wheel that you're welding, the surrounding metal has enough ability to transfer heat away from the welded area to allow you to get it liquid, let the weld occur and cool with no danger at all of ever having a fire. Here's our gas welding magnesium demonstration. This metal is AZ61BO alloy magnesium. I've had it a while but I've cleaned it off so that it's nice and uh, ready to weld. I'm going to be using rod that is sheared off strips of parent metal so that the alloy is true. I'm going to be using a flux that is a mixture of a white powder and water that was supplied to me by Sperry Flux Company. I use a torch that's hydrogen and oxygen because I like it being much cleaner and a different flame intensity that makes it much handier to control and to heat a larger area. The thing to know about gas welding magnesium and aluminum is that you pretty much all the time run at 100% penetration. So you can't fool around and waste time because it'll, it'll burn a hole right through it. So it's uh, a lot trickier matter to find and keep the right temperature for a well. So I'm going to start off here. I've, I've fluxed the metal. I'm also going to flux a piece of the rod. So we're sure we have plenty. Let's see if this works. That's a little too hot. I haven't had to do quite exactly this thing, so I'll have to hunt for a, a proper temperature. This is more like right. It should take a few seconds, two or three seconds, to get liquid. It might be a little too cool right now because it's not going liquid. There we go. I've welded aluminum with gas torch for 50 years, but I've never done magnesium. And at some point when my magnesium project came along, I had to explore it. I called up my flux supplier and asked if they had such a thing as magnesium flux, and they said, sure. So I had them send it down, and I tried it, and guess what? There you are. Let's see what we can see on the back. Now you can see it's 100% penetration, but I didn't put any flux on the back, so it's it's contaminated by the atmosphere. So let's put a, some flux on the back side. Ordinarily when you're joining two pieces of metal, you have a gap and the flux can travel through the gap, but in this case we don't have that. So try that again. I'm going to turn the heat just back up a little bit. We can stand to work faster than that. The hydrogen makes a really nice soft flame and I, I kind of don't have that right now. If I decrease the oxygen, you can get to where you can see the flame flowing around in the air. That's when it works the best. It's not too severe. If that's true of the acetylene flame too. There we go, we start to see it get shiny. Still a little bit slow, but 
I don't know if that lens will let you see the, the burn off envelope around, but it's a real soft burn off. You can just see the edges of the, the burn off flame are orange. Hopefully, you can. See there. Well, now you can see the weld bead is in there, but it's fully covered by flux. So when we wash that off, it will be a nice, clean, evenly flowed out. So that's just a quick example of, of running a bead. Would you like to wash this one off and look at it? Yeah, let's wash this one off. Okay. Here's the piece that I just washed off. Uh, this being the front side from which I welded it. On the back side, you can see that the bead that I protected with flux on the back side is very smooth and, and wet it out into the metal. So I don't know how the shadow is, but you see there's no hard edge here at all where the edge of the bead is. That's perfectly protected by the flux that was on the back. On this side, the dirt is apparent I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I've had this flux for over five years and I didn't take particular care when I was mixing it up but I'm going to try something before we do another well and put some more flux powder in there and make it a little heavier mix. Sometimes that makes the difference. Clean metal, fresh flux, clean rod. I didn't clean the rod either, so there's probably some residue of oil and dirt that came from the shear. All those things are to be avoided. See, there's a little piece of a, a brush bristle. So let's, let's do a couple more here. Also, I didn't sand the metal to perfect cleanliness, but you really shouldn't have to do that. The very first time I did this, I was really impressed with how smooth the process went. One thing that does happen with welding with hydrogen is you get a, a byproduct of water. So you'll, uh, you may notice that as we go along here, little water bubbles. So let's see, let's put flux on the back, sorry. Very soft flame burn off, burn off there compared to what we had. Maybe too much. It's still not very hot. Turn a little more oxygen into the flame. You can see it's dirt just on the surface. You can cover the rod as much as anything. Let's stop that. And I'll uh, clean off a piece of rod with some scotch Bright, and we'll see if that doesn't make a difference. Take a little more oxygen out of it. Firm the flame up a little bit. Now you can see a puddle ring forming. This is a slightly larger piece of rod which cools the weld as you go a little more with each dip. 
and I'm running a little hotter flame than I was a while ago. Now I got a smooth result going. You see how important cleanliness is. That's going to look a lot nicer than what I did a while ago. And that the biggest difference there is more flux powder. And I didn't put it into my little trough, which is probably dirty. I fluxed the rod right out of the flux and didn't contaminate it. I'll take that and wash it off. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and wash that off, Jerry? Okay. One thing to notice is even though I sanded this metal a while ago with clean sandpaper, you see that this discoloration, all this, and it's floating all over, that's all on the surface of the metal. So the metal wasn't clean, as clean as it could be to start with. And that's, there's even a little more example of the dirt. But more telling is the dirt that's happened here and just floated right over the top of the bead from the surface of the metal. So no, you haven't seen Pebble Beach caliber welding, but you've seen successful cast torch welding of magnesium and didn't catch fire. There's a fellow up in Canada that built a magnesium body for another Bugatti that was interestingly built right alongside the car that I did. Of course, they're both replicas, but they were built at the same time, both with magnesium bodies. And he, he had his people um, TIG welding that magnesium which of course, as I said, gets very hard. So he had them on there with grinders and sanders and they filled the whole shop with dust in the air, magnesium dust in the air until somebody flicked their bick or whatever it was and it went off with a major wump. So yes, it's dangerous in that regard, but if you, uh, if you take any care at all, you won't have any danger at all with it. I was actually pleased to work with it. It's uh, got some real good qualities. I want to tell you more about the amazing magnesium bodied Bugatti project that Jerry mentioned. Magnesium sheet is notoriously difficult to shape, and Jerry took on this project as a challenge, hoping he could adapt the tools and methods he'd used for decades shaping aluminum. After some disappointing results with cold work in the material, Jerry learned that if the magnesium sheet was heated to the correct temperature, he could successfully shape it in his Pettengill power hammer. This picture shows what happens if you don't get the temperature right. With dedication and practice, he started getting spectacular results. The fenders and tail section of the Bugatti required extensive shaping, and he was able to pull off the construction perfectly. The finished car is presented unpainted, so no filler could be used to mask any blemishes. As you can see, the results are masterful. Here are some teaser shots of radiators Jerry made for a Gurney Eagle and for a Duesenberg. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on how Jerry makes his spectacular radiators. If you enjoy my videos, please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when I post a new project. If you like, you can support these videos through Patreon. Just click the link at the end of the video. I'll see you next time.